imagine you're walking down the street and you come across a young man standing right in front of you. And he's carrying his six-year-old dead son. What would you do? Four years ago, I was in that situation. What did I do? I walked right past him and did nothing. For the next few days, I wondered, why didn't I do anything? Was it because I was so busy that I couldn't spare a few moments for a grieving father? Or could I not afford a few dollars to give that kid a proper burial? Or was it simply, I just didn't know I could make a difference? You know how they say, there comes a moment in everyone's life when you have a reality check and you ask yourself, what is your purpose? Many of you have had that moment. Some of you might have had it more than once. That was the time when it happened to me. Let me take you back, way back. I grew up in a small developing country called Bangladesh. Let me put that into perspective for you. Bangladesh is three-fourths the size of the state of Washington with a population of 150 million of the world's nicest people. <laughs> My family would now be considered an upper middle class family, but that wasn't always the case. I remember when I was young, our family of four would share a single rickshaw to the market, and there we would share a single bottle of Coke, because that is all we could afford. And I'm not talking about your two-liter plastic bottle Coke. <laughs> My father, he worked really hard to improve our lives. So when I finished high school, unlike most high school graduates of Bangladesh, I was lucky to be able to come to America for higher education. I couldn't afford to go to my top choice universities, but I worked hard at the places I could go to. And after finishing my undergrad and my graduate degrees, I arrived in Seattle about eight years ago to work at Microsoft. So I thought, I have made it. Here I was with the world's smartest people at Microsoft, but I wanted more. I was at the bottom of the American corporate ladder, and I was taking a dead aim to get to the top. Or at least, I told myself, I will spend the rest of my life to see how far I can go. <clears throat> I was well on my way. Then four years ago, my life changed when I met that grieving father. It hit me at that point that this corporate ladder I was trying to climb has very little significance. In a world where more than half the population lives under $2 a day, there is really just one ladder that mattered. And on that single ladder, I already belonged to the top 1%. Most of the people in the world would love to be where I am. Yet I was busy seeking more. I had forgotten who I was, and more importantly, I had forgotten where I came from. So here I was at Microsoft with this massive realization I was really confused. I didn't know how to handle it. Then, Bill Gates came to my assistance. This is how. At that time, he announced he was gonna leave Microsoft and spend full time working at the Gates Foundation. So, he was doing a lot of interviews, and in one of those interviews, he said, it could be lonely at the top. So here was this man I admired, top of this ladder I was trying to climb, and he was saying that it wasn't all that terrific up there. 
that single comment brought clarity to me. And that's when I decided to focus on the ladder that mattered. I started Jelcona with the best partner I could have asked for, my wife, Nadia. For the last four years, while holding down a full-time job at Microsoft, I've been able to grow Jolcona significantly. I look back, and I think those four years were exciting. It was crazy. I don't know what the heck I was doing, sleeping on four nights, or four hours a night. But it was all worth it. I I want to tell you again that it was all worth it. We live in a world where we are given a lot of opportunities and I was able to take all that was given to me and I realized that I'd miss, I was missing the most important thing. And that single moment when I realized that, it all came together. Society tells us often that giving comes after success. Society often tells us you go to school, you get a degree, you get a job, you have a career, you raise a family, you retire, and then maybe you'll think about giving back. Ladies and gentlemen, that is but one path. We should not believe for a second that that is the best path or that that is the only path. Life's biggest gift to all of us is the ability to change the lives of those who are less fortunate. And that gift does not come with a minimum age or a minimum amount. The youth of today are proof of that. I'd like you to meet Taylor. I first met him about three years ago we had just launched the beta version of Jolcona's service. And when he found out about Jolcona, he decided that Christmas, he didn't want, need another sweater. Instead, he asked his family to help him educate girls in Afghanistan in lieu of giving him holiday gifts. Some $800 later, they had educated 20 girls in a country where six out of seven girls don't have any education. Taylor was inspired by this big change his small action had. And a year later, he went to Bangladesh to do an internship with one of the largest NGOs in the world called BRAC. Now Taylor is a college senior and he's doing an internship with the United Nations. I am sure Taylor will go on to have a huge career in fighting poverty. And it's not just youths here in America. Even in Africa, the youth are taking charge. If you are a street kid growing up in Nairobi, Kenya, life is pretty tough. More than likely, you'd be living in the shadows of the big slums like Kibera or Madare. If you are lucky, you will have one guardian who will actually care about you. By the time you are 16, you would have either done drugs, joined a gang, taken part in a robbery, became a parent, or all of those things. So let me tell you about one such street kid named Wycliffe. Wycliffe lost his mother at the age of seven. She died of AIDS. He then moved to Nairobi to live with his grandfather in the Madare slums. By the time Wycliffe was 14, he was doing drugs, and he did join a gang. Then one day, he met an American vis businessman who was visiting Nairobi. The businessman was so impressed with Wycliffe that he decided he was going to help Wycliffe get off the streets and go to school. Wycliffe finished high school at the age of 23. Inspired by the opportunity he was given to change his life, he decided that he was going to do the same for other street kids. So last year, at the age of 24, Wycliffe started his own social enterprise called Keto, which today employs four people and is educating and providing um, employment opportunities to other street kids. Wycliffe literally is creating the new generation of social entrepreneurs on the streets of Nairobi. And he's not doing it alone. 
through the, our Jolcona service, youth around the world are able to support WeCliff with $50 donations at a time. So am I here to tell you about some heroic young individuals? Not really. I'm here to tell you that there is a paradigm shift happening in the world today. Whether they are rebuilding their country after a genocide in Rwanda or they're building their country after a huge disaster like in Japan, the youth of the world are coming together in creative ways to affect change. One idea at a time, one donation at a time. Now, don't let our young age, our lack of resources, our lack of experience fool you. As we've seen in the past, those were the only things needed often for change and innovation to take place. Taylor will go on to be an American leader in social entrepreneurship. Wycliffe, by the time he's 35, will have changed the lives of more than 10,000 street kids in Kenya. When I was 29, I created a technology that has allowed thousands of young people since then to connect and change the lives of tens of thousands of others around the world and feel connected to that change in a way that was not possible 10 years ago. My generation will be the ones who will get the world to turn the corner. I can guarantee that. The real question now is what you will be remembered for. I really hope you will be remembered as the ones who helped my generation to get there. Thank you. <laughs>